So we got a full slate of Star Wars movies currently by Disney and Lucasfilm and we're about to get more at this year's D23 event but there's one specifically that a lot of fans have been really backing away from and really keeping their distance from and we're going to be talking about exactly what's been going on between Stephen Knight, the writer of this project, as well as Charmin, the director of Mrs. Marvel of one of the episodes or a couple, in charge of the Rey Star Wars movie, also known as the New Jedi Order film. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And let's get right into exactly what's going on here, specifically with the overall structure of the Rey Star Wars movie. Now, I know a lot of people like to call it the Rey movie. I try to not use it that way because Rey is going to be more or less of a supporting character instead of the main main character. There's been a lot of drama with this film, by the way. The main lead dropped out of the film and reportedly John Boyega is back as Finn in, of course, this new Ray film, which is going against what he said about Disney, and it makes him look like a sellout, to be honest. As much as I love Boyega, and I do, he stood up for the fans, he stood up against Disney, and then reportedly now, he is coming back on board, and took a paycheck, and is getting involved as Force-sensitive Finn in the Ray movie, which some fans may like that, but as an actor and as a person, it goes against what he said. But moving on to the main subject here without getting too, you know, um, off subject. What's interesting about this is that with three Star Wars movies announced by Disney, the Rey film, the New Jedi Order film, whatever you want to call it, the Dawn of the Jedi movie, and Dave Filoni's film. However, one of the big treatments that writer Stephen Knight is going with for the film for the Rey movie is to create something in the story that will most likely drive fans away from the film. Via the storyboards of this movie, Stephen Knight has a new appearance planned for Rey, where her hair is completely short, around the same length as Luke's in Return of the Jedi. The plan, however, as part of the New Jedi Order tradition, and a New Jedi tradition, and what director of Mrs. Marvel is supporting is for Jedi and Jedi Masters that are female to dye their hair a different color to be similar to how Jedi Masters usually have or grow a beard, typically in the Star Wars franchise. Now, these storyboard illustration descriptions, Rey is sporting short, blonde hair, and is described to be a leading, of course, a series of four sensitives that she is training on what appears to be Tatooine. Both Stephen Knight, the writer, and Charmin, the director, are very confident in this new Jedi tradition of dyeing their hair once they become a master for Rey's new Jedi Order. Now let me stop here for a sec. This is sounding extremely ridiculous at this point. So basically what they're trying to do is that they're trying to emulate a new Jedi tradition. If you guys look at the established Jedi Order, it doesn't matter if it's in the prequels, the Old Republic, or even in the age of where you have Luke Skywalker's new academy. A lot of the Jedi Masters always have beards. You got Kenobi, you've got even Luke himself who sports a beard eventually. You got other characters out there. Many, many, many Jedi Masters eventually have a beard in the overall canon structure, right? So basically what Stephen Knight and Charmin are doing here is Rey's new Jedi Order, at least for the ones that are female, as far as we know, maybe the male Jedi are going to do this too, I have no idea, but via the storyboard illustration descriptions, her new order, a new tradition is changing your hair color, dyeing it into a different color, and I just don't know what to think about this, I really don't. I, maybe it's a way for them to simply give Rey a brand new look and to boost merchandise sales. It could easily be something like that. That might very well be the true drive, but we know the true drive here, and that is to essentially kind of create their own rules and systems and traditions of this new Jedi Order that is really going to be so far and different to what Luke is doing in post-Return of the Jedi. Now, moving on to the next thing, as if this couldn't get any more cringe. Charmin the director of Mrs. Marvel episodes, is said to have been the one to have decided 
Rey's hair color and Steven Knight is the one who came up with the New Jedi Master tradition for the female Jedi in Rey's New Jedi Order to change their hair color. Daisy Ridley is said to actually support this idea since it gives her a new design and appearance and though John and Dave are not involved in this project, they still plan on reinventing Rey completely with their post episode 9 series that's still in development to this day. Stephen Knight is also said to finish writing the ending once the writer's strike comes to an end. Both he and the Mrs. Marvel director, Charmaine, are also planning the building the order all by herself for Rey, much like Luke did in post-Return of the Jedi's timeline. That's being told in the upcoming Mandoverse, by the way. Now, the slate of shows are to be announced later on that's going to establish Luke's new order progressively, and I think that's the only thing to really look forward to when it comes to Star Wars, is whatever John and Dave are doing, and what they are doing with Luke's new order, and Ahsoka Tano, and all her followers like Sabine Wren, Ezra Bridger, Era Syndulla, etc. The rise of Grand Admiral Thrawn, that's the real stuff that I think a lot of us are going to enjoy. But this Ray film, I've talked about this, I really tried to stay very optimistic about this, but Stephen Knight and Charmin so far, it sounds like this is going to be probably one of the most horrible takes on Star Wars in, in, in its existence. Now, do I believe that this movie is even going to enter production? And when I mean production, I'm talking about principal photography, filming, which by the way, they are trying to begin filming by mid-2024. They want to begin casting later this year into early 2024 and get the ball rolling. But with this writer's strike, guys, let's be clear, the ending is not even done yet, and they are in no way going to get this thing out by 2025. I've said this several times here. There's no way it's happening. This movie is not coming out in December of 2025, mark my words, unless they really get this writer's strike done and over with in a month's time, and he finishes that ending by, let's say, for example, August. Then, and maybe then, you'll get this movie out by 2025 of December, because it gives you enough leeway to really cast by the end of this year fully and to film throughout the entirety of 2024 and post-production for the first two halves of 2025. So look, at the end of the day, I don't know why they were so bent on bringing Ray back. I think it's a bad call because there's so many people out there, including myself, that don't really like the sequel trilogy. And let me be very honest also, there are moments and scenes in the sequels that I really do cherish and love, but for the most part, the sequel trilogy is just not true Star Wars on a consistent basis, right? Whenever they appear on TV, you don't really feel like you gravitate toward watching them from, from start to finish. When the originals pop up on, what is it, like TBS? You can't help yourself but to watch it. You have to tune in. You have to watch them. And that just goes to show you that they hold a lot more rewatchability and rewatch value than the sequels ever will. So anyways, guys, I would love to hear your opinion on this take by Stephen Knight and Charmaine. What do you guys think about this? And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.